This episode is brought to you by World of Warships. The game is free to play, with the perfect balance of action and strategy. You can command a massive naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels. In this team-based game, you can unlock new ships and dominate the oceans with 30 million players worldwide. Experience combat and weather effects that make each engagement unique and change the tactics of battle. In World of Warships, each in-game ship is faithfully recreated using 3D scans of the real-life version, and you can customize it to your design. World of Warships is constantly updating the game, so there's something new to experience with a steady cadence of new missions, game updates, and events. There are over 200 ships to play across 11 different nations, and submarines will be coming soon. Use our exclusive code below and get two free ships, the St. Louis and the premium ship Emden. Click the link below to play World of Warships and collect an exclusive bonus starter pack. New players can register with the code BOOM to receive 200 doubloons, 2.5 million credits, the two free ships, the St. Louis and the premium ship Emden, 7 days premium time, and more. Sea Kamikaze – Military Tactic – World War II When you hear the word kamikaze, the first thing that comes to mind are Japanese suicide pilots crashing into the decks of enemy ships in World War II. These kamikaze pilots, the divine wind of the Japanese imperial forces, were eager to sacrifice themselves for the Empire of Japan. But committing the ultimate sacrifice was also performed by other means than from the sky. This tactic threatened the Allies from the sea as well, even from below the sea. There were several maritime alternatives to air suicide attacks, such as explosive speedboats, kamikaze torpedoes, midget submarines, and kamikaze frogmen. Explosive speedboats were identified by the Japanese commanders as the most effective alternative method to air kamikaze attacks. Both the Japanese Imperial Navy and the Japanese Imperial Army ran their own projects. The Navy version was known as the Shinyo, meaning sea quake. The project, which started in spring of 1944, was aimed at creating a light and fast boat, armed with a sufficient amount of explosive, to cause damage even to large enemy vessels. After a series of prototypes, the project resulted in the Shinyo Type 1 Mod 1. In essence, the Mod 1 was a scaled-down torpedo boat using the same 67-horsepower Toyota KC-6 automobile engine connected directly to the propeller shaft. With a length of 16 feet 9 inches or 5.1 meters and a hull made of wood, the Mod 1 was able to develop a speed of 23 knots. Its main armament was a 595-pound charge of high explosive placed in the bow. The charge was constructed to detonate upon impact, but also via a manual switch. Later versions of the Mod 1 had one, or in some variants, two anti-ship rocket launchers mounted on the stern. The boats also had built-in cable cutters on the bow and in front of the cockpit in order to be able to break through protective booms. The overall design of the Shinyo was so simple that production was established in both large and small shipyards, and even at automobile factories. The plan was to build around 7,000 boats. By the end of the war, production was halted at 6,200. The more sophisticated model was the Shinyo Type 5, armed with two rocket launchers plus a 13mm heavy machine gun. The Type 5 was designed to serve as a detachment leader's boat that would provide cover fire for the Mod 1s. The Imperial Japanese Army's project was run under the cover name of Marure. The Army developed two types of boats, one for training and one that was used in combat. The latter was known as the Heihon model. Heihons were constructed from plywood veneers and also used automobile engines that allowed speeds of up to 23 knots. The big difference from the Navy Kamikaze boats was that the Heihon had no explosive charge. Instead, they were armed with two depth charges that were supposed to be dropped next to the hull of an enemy ship. As depth charges were not as effective, the Heihon could have targeted only unarmored vessels such as troop transports. Using depth charges instead of explosives in the bow even allowed the pilot to survive the attack. In parallel with the boats, the Japanese Navy worked on a project involving man-driven kamikaze torpedoes. The idea was devised in 1942, but only when Imperial Japan began to face defeat was it brought to the table in spring of 1944. The project was carried out under the codename Kaiten Igyo, meaning the Great Undertaking. The first Kaiten Type 1 was completed already in June 1944. It was a modification of the Type 93 Model 3 Long Lance torpedo. The forward section was extended to fit the pilot and a massive 3,420-pound warhead, which was enough to sink almost any of the American ships. Unlike similar human torpedo concepts, the pilot was placed inside the pressure hull and directed the torpedo with the help of a periscope. 
The Kai-10-1 was designed to be launched from a parent submarine. Once launched, the Kai-10 had a fairly good range and could reach a speed of 30 knots. Its hull was strong enough to withhold a depth of 200 feet. Once close to the target, the pilot would level the torpedo to 16 feet in order to use his periscope. A more sophisticated design than the Kamikaze boat, Kaitens were built at the Kure Navy Yard, one of the largest Japanese shipyards. Three other Kaiten versions were designed, but the Type 1 remained the first choice for mass production. A total of 330 Kaiten Type 1s and its improved modification, the Type 1 Mod 1, were produced until the end of the war. When the kamikaze attacks became a generally accepted doctrine, the Japanese forces began to throw everything they had at the Allies, even considering midget submarines. The Koru and the Kairu submarines had been in service since the beginning of the war. In 1944, they were assigned to Toko missions with the order to ram into enemy ships. About 360 submarines were built for the decisive Ketsugo operation, but fortunately for the Allies, they never saw combat. The Ketsugo operation of defending Japan from the impending Allied invasion implied the use of the entire Japanese arsenal at their disposal. The strategy specifically emphasized the use of kamikaze attacks. For the defense against landing troops, the Japanese prepared a special type of suicide unit, kamikaze frogmen. Fukuru, or crouching dragons, were divers equipped with special diving suits and breathing apparatuses. They were armed with Type 5 mines with a 22-pound explosive charge attached to a long pole. The plan was to deploy Fukuru frogmen along the coast where the Allied landing was expected. Hundreds of suicide divers would be positioned at a depth of 13 to 20 feet in three staggered rows. Fukurus would be waiting for an enemy landing craft in specially created concrete shelters. Once they arrived, Fukurus would attack them with the mines on their poles. The first Frogman Kamikaze unit, the 71st Totsugekitai Arashi, was established in summer 1945, and the plan was to deploy a total of 40,000 Frogmen. The cost of the project, as well as the course of the events, ended in the project being abandoned. In the end, only the Kamikaze torpedoes and boats saw action against the Allies. Japanese commanders had high expectations for these weapons. Crews were recruited from men aged 16 to 20, reservists, petty officers and cadets, some volunteers, and some not. The first Kai-10 operation took place in November 1944 by three submarines, each armed with four kamikaze torpedoes. The targets were ships from the U.S. Navy's Ulithai Atoll Anchorage. Ships in Anchorage were considered the best targets because they were static. Out of the initial three submarines, only two reached the target area. Only one out of eight Kai-10s launched hit the target, the USS Mississinawa Fleet Oiler. As the ship was full of aircraft fuel, the hit resulted in a huge cloud of smoke. It was so powerful that it convinced the Japanese that several ships were hit. The Ulithai Atoll operation gave the Japanese the conviction that the Kaiten attacks were worth the effort. Over time, though, this would prove to be false hope. Due to the U.S. Navy's highly effective anti-submarine operations, the number of Japanese submarines lost in action increased, and at the same time the number of Kaiten successfully hitting their targets decreased. Nevertheless, the Japanese continued with the Kamikaze sea attacks, but switched to targets in the open sea. These targets were less protected, but still managed to repel the majority of Kaiten attacks. The last U.S. vessel to be sunk by a Kaiten was the USS Underhill Destroyer Escort in July 1945. Unlike Kaitens, the Shinyu and Heihon Kamikaze boats were planned to be used in defensive operations against the Allied landing forces. Their success rate was slightly higher than Kaitens, but still far from making any significant impact. A great number of kamikaze boats were destroyed while being transferred. The boats that managed to reach their bases had some success in early 1945, but that was soon stopped by an aggressive American anti-kamikaze campaign. Kamikaze boats were hunted down by U.S. Navy patrol torpedo boats and were also destroyed while still in their bases by aircraft attacks and naval gunfire. At Iwo Jima and Okinawa, kamikaze boats posed absolutely no threat to the American landing craft. By the summer of 1945, the sea kamikaze attacks had proven to be a massive failure. This episode was brought to you by World of Warships. Use our exclusive code below and get two free ships, the St. Louis and the premium ship Emden. Click the link below to play World of Warships and collect an exclusive bonus starter pack. New players can register with the code BOOM to receive 200 doubloons, 2.5 million credits, the two free ships, the St. Louis and the premium ship Emden, seven days premium time, and more.